Hello everyone, uh, this is my new uh, mounter balancer for the Hunter Revolution and then this is the Hunter uh, GSP 9700. And uh, we're about 95% uh, of the way done with the Road Force Elite. And I just talked to my rep and he says, stop. So all the things you're about to see in the next couple of minutes of this video that Mike and I do and don't do, this is a disclaimer. Um, it's actually, I, I kind of thought it would be this way, but uh, I'm impatient and I didn't call the guy ahead of time like normally, like I don't normally read the instructions very well. Hunter, as part of your purchase, does all this stuff for you. But uh, you know, it is fun, you'll see in the video here, it's fun that we uh, get to figure some things out and fumble through it and learn what each thing is. Uh, but we'll catch, uh, we'll, so, so I'll show you that. Uh, and then we'll catch back up when um, when the hunter rep comes in a couple of days to come and do the install for us. So we'll catch up with the install. He'll fix all the things that we did right, the wrong. I think we did everything right, though. I think we did. And uh, and we'll have him show us, you know, how it's put together. At least we'll we'll talk him into it. So uh, enjoy this video of me putting together my life's freaking dream of complete excess waste and nonsense. But man, is it going to be awesome! All right, this is uh, Road Force GSP 9700, and this is the RE13 version. And I did find out, thanks to uh, the guy in the comments, they have a like a pneumatic clamp, like a speed, they call it a speed clamp. Uh, and so this one, we have the threaded yeah. clamp, which is yeah. why we got the RE13 version of this, which is better. So first thing we did, we just took those two little screws here, took the top off, and I'm just gonna take you through step-by-step step how we put this thing together. This is how it comes. Uh, on a giant pallet with tons of boxes and I unboxed everything and now we've got to make sense of what everything is. All right, so we're gonna put the monitor on first. So, so where is that? Loosely secure the display support. So there's a, a display support somewhere around here. Don't scratch the stuff, Mike. Yeah, I know, sorry. Come on. Take out of my paycheck. Okay. And there's two more back here. Lost of directions. Now with step one, incrementally tighten the four screws together to attach the display. We needed that instruction tip there. It'd be so nice to work on all this stuff after you had all your equipment in here, you know? Mm -hmm. Kind of like working at my house, doing all this stuff, and then I get all the Milwaukee tools there after I'm all done. <laughs> Remember when we started projects and we were working with your old tools, mm -hmm. your Peugeot, Peugeot channel locks, Pittsburgh, locks, Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh yeah. or whatever they were, <laughs> Pittsburgh crescent wrenches and some channel locks and a and yeah. a framing hammer. Mm -hmm. Hold in there. Now we need VGA cable. I wonder if they. I wonder if part of the deal they come and assemble this. I don't know. Think. I don't know. I don't really care. I kind of want to see how it's all done, you know. See whether or not they offer this service or not. This is half the fun. Now you really understand your machine, you know. Yep. Instead of just having someone show up and put it together for you. So we should start doing, start charging people to call when they can't figure out how to freaking twist on a fitting on their pressure washer. That'll be a $14.99, sir. Yeah. It was charged by the minute for the phone call. That'll get real smart real fast. We're on the LCD power cable, USB square end power cable, and blue VGA through the center hole near the top of the display. Okay. So that's in. Our power supply is all plugged in, hooked up. The VGA cable's hooked up. So the printer goes on the side over here somewhere. Yeah. What are you going to print? Huh? What am I going to print? Like, if, once you're done, it gives you an out. Yeah. What, what, what ounces wear on the wheel kind of thing, I'll bet. Yeah, I guess. For your customers. <laughs> For your employees. <laughs> yep. All right, so that can say down. Remove the return spring from the load roller mechanism and then push the load roller forward. Remove all packaging and safety from the hood shaft. Yeah, that's what we like to do, remove all safety. Yeah, we don't like safety. Safety's for the Safety babies. slows you down. Yeah, that's right. I want to make sure that I'm blind and deaf by the end yeah, of this. That's right. Okay, back piece is on. All right, now we need to take the spring off the bottom there. Take Just remove the, the nut. Remove the nut? What nut? Remove the clevis pin from the cylinder. Pin. Okay, Retain all these pieces. 
Double check that the nut behind the safety hood is tight. It is. Okay. It's tight against the bearing. Keep going. It clicks over this bushing. Hang on. Hang on. Let's see here. There we go. We're freaking idiots. Well, you kept saying cover. I'm like, how the cover yeah. going to go? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So there's that. Okay. Now this wiring must connect over here somewhere that we've already put the cover on. That thing sits on there like that. Okay. Make the hood camera connections at the board. The terminal goes to J9. We did all our wiring. There's your camera right in there. Assemble the safety hood so that it can be installed. Secure the two halves of the hood with three quarter 20 by 0.75 inch pan head screws. Ooh, Mike. What? The garage doors will be here. Yeah, they're not going to be here in time. When? Probably not till tomorrow. Huh? Probably not till next week. Oh. I'm going to have to quit my job. I already know it. <laughs> I'm getting these panic phone calls. Mike, there's so much stuff here. I don't know what to do. Let's get over here quick. All right, now we put our roller mechanism on. Throw Just stuff. means more work for us later. Uh, reinstall the return spring to the load mechanism. See some slaughter holes down there. Okay, the spring is back on. Hot. So it says that they're install the hood rest. If not done from the, the hood factor. rest is on there. Got it's it. this here. Slowly close the hood. If interference with the hood, if, if interference with the hood proximity switch is detected, make uh, make necessary not, adjustments. They're not. I already looked at that. They're fine. Yeah. Those are those two switches I was pointing at back yeah. here. Is the hood staying up now when you let go? No. But I think it's because the cylinder needs to be pressurized. That would be normally pushing air. Well, how am I going to do that? I don't have the tools for that, do I? Tools for what? I'm pressurizing that. No. Should be pressurized from from the get. No, no. This here, the cylinder. Yeah. Well, there's no air running to this thing yet. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, but wouldn't that be hydraulic? No, that's a pneumatic. Oh. Looks good. They must put that on there properly. From the yeah, fact that's probably just a precaution. It's just, it's yeah, just yeah. to cover. We the don't need that safety. Power balance. on the balancer. Oh, crap, we can't do that. Well, maybe, or maybe it's for the printer. I don't know. All right, uh, this is calibration, calibration. Install the bullseye cullet storage. So I thought that hammerhead thingy was just for display, but that's the laser. It tells you where to put the weights. This is the worst idea I've had yet. What's that, working in this The heat? only worst idea was taking off the pallets. It was, it was even hotter. And I didn't have this wonderful fan going. It's blowing. It's like yeah, we need another. It's like one. huffing hot air at us. We don't got another one. My dad stole it. We're on page 45. We we jump some steps because we can't calibrate yet. Okay, that's in. Yeah, see, I, I gotta read the instructions better. No. Maybe we should have installed this prior to. Putting no, the tube on. it doesn't have us doing that. It would be easier. Don't you think? Then have to do not about stare it. at the laser beam. Oh, I planned on it. Told you we'd be blind and deaf by the end of this. Shim mounting if applicable. Plumb bobs. See, we're not going to be able to do any plumbing until we get the darn lasers going, right? This. Oh, yeah, it did say to mount it first. I thought so. <laughs> I was say, it would be a lot easier. That's all right, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's see if you do it three or four times, then let's you're see, fat. Right, see there's HD, there's bracket except HD Elite, then there's HD Elite, and then there's non-HD Elite, right. except HD Elite, I don't know what we'll it'll do. Pull that off. I'm making it more complicated, there's only two of them. Ah, we're getting, we're going to get more proficient at it if we No, we, I got a ladder far. right there, leave it on there. Why? I got a ladder. Yeah. Where's are we looking for? And J21. All right, so we're back three weeks, what was it, three weeks later after uh, Glenn told me to stop messing with the crap. Uh, so Todd's here. So he's uh, in charge of um, uh, setting up, installing, putting the machine. I guess it's more assembly, not, you know, you know they're assembling machines, yeah. getting machines up and running. 
so he's here to finish the job that I shouldn't have done and uh, check all the things that we did. And, and um, I told him to make sure he lay into me all the things we did wrong uh, that would have blown up and ruined the machine. Uh, so he's going he's gonna to calibrate and set up and get us operational and then start to maybe show us how to, how to do a couple things. Um, I do have a set of tires uh, for the Tesla that we could put on today, which would be kind of cool. We could take the, I also want to take the wheels off the E36 and rebalance those. Uh, but that's a bigger project because I have to, um, I'm basically probably going to have to wet sand the inner barrel on those to get the weights to stick uh, because we coated those with Gliss and um, Deluxe. So anyway, we're going to follow, Mike's going to follow Todd around here today and he's going to show us what he's doing and we're going to learn about the machines. And I like to get and figure out the inner workings. I mean, this is the equivalent of a new M3. I could have bought an M3 or I bought these. And so instead I bought these. And so, um, you know, if we're going to have them, I want to know how they work. And that's the fun of it. So we get the opportunity to kind of see how they put the, they assemble the car, if you will, by putting the, putting the thing together. We did, uh, we ran a, um, a 20 amp circuit dedicated. We don't need it, but we have a dedicated 20 amp. Uh, and then um, I have a dedicated 30 amp for the Hunter. Uh, Todd's telling me we could have just run them both on a 20 amp. Um, and the 30 amp circuit isn't working, but we'll plug it in here to get it operational. So I think what I'm gonna do in here is <clears throat> I'm gonna start to lay the Swiss tracks down and then I'm gonna go that way. I'm gonna come all the way back and then I'm gonna come this way. I'm gonna leave this gap open because we're gonna have to bring the forklift in here in order to lift that, that, uh, that thing up to put the Swiss tracks underneath it. I don't wanna cut around it. I think it'd be better to just set it on the Swiss tracks. Same thing here, so we, but what I don't want to do is take new Swiss tracks and drive the forklift on. The forklift, it works on there, but the, because it's a three wheel, you know, those two <coughs> wheels in the back, kind of grab the tiles and really flex them, so I'd rather not do that if I have the choice. When I'm all done. So they don't, um, they don't ship this assembled because the monitors will get jacked just, up. Is it'd that? Be, it's, the mass of it would be too much, you know, you can put I think the key to this video is just showing people kind of the inner workings, not so much how to, mm -hmm. but just hey, here's how these things are put together. I think it would be really interesting. This is really interesting to me, so I think it'd be interesting to others too. You know, building the garage is a lot like when I was a financial advisor. You get a financial advisor after you have money, which is kind of stupid. You can't need one when you don't have money. So a garage. <laughs> Like you do all the stuff and then you get lights when like you kind of need lights first. You know, this, at least that's the way this build is going because my girl lights aren't here yet. They're supposed to be here in uh, mid-October. So it'd be nice to have lights, you know, on the ceiling, do that first. That way we can capture some beautiful footage on everything. But and the, the cards aren't, uh, aren't turning out to be uh, in my favor here. That's pretty darn good. Yeah, that's about what I, you know, what I expect them to sound like. That's freaking sweet. What I'm gonna do is put it in service mode so I can adjust some settings and stuff. I'll cut that. All right, I'm gonna do a couple things like make it a little quieter because it's a little noisy. The load roller forced on every tire, re road force every tire you do. Mm. Oh, like I can you can't do it without it. It's actually done. Yeah, it's actually disabled already, so I'll leave it where it's at. Hood, it's enabled. I want that. I want that. And part of the purpose for going into, calib into service mode when I go to calibrate it is if it shows any errors, it'll pop up automatically and I'll know what's going on. If it doesn't like something, it'll tell us. That. And there's a couple of calibration procedures you can't get into without being in service mode. So the good part about Hunter stuff is it's pretty self explanatory. Read what it says on the screen and do what it tells you. You kind of, it walks you through it. This is probably one of the most important steps of doing the calibration on the three spin is getting this top dead center right because you're kind of telling the machine where this weight's at. That way it knows where it's at for future spins and it's looking for the proper weight in the proper place. It's looking for that weight, which is a four and a quarter ounce weight. And if it finds it in the right spot, then it's going to be happy with it and keep going forward.
this stuff is basically storing the calibration into it and letting it know what's going on. And our calibration weight always gets stored back here in the neck of the balancer. It's got a designated spot for it. So you always know where it's at. Yeah, what's happened, you see where that laser's at? It's supposed to be directly on top of that. And it's adjusted in this hammer head up here. So I'm just taking a couple of these retaining the screws off so I can get to the screws a little easier. The laser is just a, um, gives you um, a pointer basically to know where you put your wheel weight. This is just to give you an optical spot instead of just saying, hey, put it straight up and down at 12 o'clock. It actually points it out to you. That way you're not having to wonder. No, it's it's a really good machine. It's really, it's one of those, it's also for speed in shops that are really busy. Mm -hmm. Works really well because they don't have to measure wheels. They don't have to, you know. It's easy to train on too. So if you have newer guys, it's it helps a lot too. It's not, that's basically what you want. You want it straight across the top. So you got a good line on both sides. You know, it's the lasers all the way out here and it's all the way over here. It's two separate lasers. Now that I know everything's working electronically, I put all the covers back on and kind of get it buttoned up. Just kind of doubled up on one USB, one of the USB cables. That's really it. Not too bad. The optical profile is what actually measures the wheel. It paints a picture of it electronically so it can determine where it wants the wheel leads. So that's what we're going to calibrate now. I know up to a 40 wheel spin on it. Um, basically, if it fits inside the tub without hitting anything, it'll it'll run it. The first three spin calibration I did, um, you'd want to do that anytime you feel like there might be a problem, because there's that it's actually an option for the cu customer to do it. Um, even though it does have its own built-in e-cal, which kind of self-calibrates depending on temperature and all that. Um, but the three spin calibration I did first is the one that during the, when I show you how the machine works, that's one of the calibrations I actually show you. So you, you can actually do that on your own on, on occasion if you feel it needs it or something yeah. like that. As a general thumb, they don't require a whole lot of calibration, but in the rear that you want to do something with it. That's for this here. What you're reading is, it'll read the radial of the, um, the harmonics of the tire and everything. It'll tell you if a tire will pull left or right. This is telling the, giving it um, a reference as far as where the lateral force is coming. It's actually calibrating the lateral force uh, mechanism or uh, portion of the machine. So it, it has like a set reading, kind of gives it a baseline. And that's the final step of calibration that's ready to use right now. So we could go ahead and start using it. Finish up the revolution, I guess, first, and we'll go over all the machines. It's about 65 dB, I can still talk. Oh, you got a little, uh, little jank tester wheel, huh? Yeah. That's good. trash tire I got, so it's not a very good tire. Mm -hmm. What it's telling you is excessive force, you really can't make this one straight. So but like I said, it's been mounted and dismounted I don't know how many times. It's pretty much destroyed. So mm -hmm. it just to show you what the machine will do. Yeah. So it says you can get it down to 41 pounds, which at that point you're really getting another tire, you're not messing with up. If you get if it says you can get down to below 15 on a passenger car tire, you would go ahead and run that. But yeah. Something like that you're not gonna do much with. Interesting. It still gives you a single weight solution, so selling you can put the weight right there. And it's actually servoed to it already. So it's already got a lid up, that's where you put your weight. Got it. 
Where Does it go? matter if you put it on the inside or outside? Well, you, you have it's to, gonna want it where, you, where you're show, it's showing you on the picture. So right now it's assuming this is a sticky, or which it is. You notice there's no lip for a wheel weight, so it knows it. You can pick different places to put it. You can put it oh, there. Oh, okay. So you can put it back in that. So if you, got a, if, if you can get all the way on the edge, that'd be the best. Generally, if you're that far out, lock on the edge of the wheel, you're not gonna be anywhere near the brakes, but center of the wheel would be a problem. But you just have to look at your wheel and look at your brakes and see where you can put it and kind of move it around where you need to. Because that was the issue on my E36, is that they put all the weights on the inside, but the, uh -huh. the, the cal you know, calipers knocked them right off. Right, yeah. But you can change it around and do what you need to do with it. Mm, so okay. It always gives you the option of it. Like I said, it's got a single weight solution here, and you can go away from a uh, dual weight solution if you want. If you really had to get creative, because you had really had like a, a really massive thing, you could actually go in and make it a, you could do that and move it around wherever you need it to. Or you could go in a single weight. Yeah. We're getting ahead of ourselves. You're going to show us yeah. that. Right <laughs> Lord, it hasn't rained this much in weeks. So, I got okay. some weights next door, too. I got to bring <laughs> over. Yeah, no problem. And also, if it, like you notice right now, it's holding it in place for you. So, only it'll do something different for you. Tell it to see something different, it'll kick out. But then if you go, wait, I want that spot back. You push servo, it comes back to it. So this is good. Of course, I don't know if you notice the what it'll want to double tap the pedal. So you don't have to spin it all the way in by hand. goes there that little guy sits there mm -hmm. and you put all your various weight sizes and types and colors in the tray up here you're also gonna have your flange plate for this which is probably what you're gonna use for a lot of your wheels we'll get into that later on yeah. the bigger cone yeah put on bigger wheels can I, I see the spacers and stuff if I could put like a, a felt strip on there that's a rubber piece there now yeah that comes on and off that's what we you know it even says for aluminum only mm. But if you're doing high-end wheels like this, you're going to want to use your flange plate anyway. Okay. Flange plate goes in the lug holes? Yeah. 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 You still use the cone in the back and use the lug holes in the front. Oh, okay. And then you would take this off and put this flat one here on. Got it. So and then it doesn't touch the, the face plate. of the wheel. Right. Oh, yeah, this is going to be fun. Yeah. Right. For the kind of wheels you're dealing with, yeah, you're going to want to use the flange plate probably for everything. Yeah. It would take a little more time, but... Yeah. But then you have them more secure and you're right. not. I got certain scratched. customers that won't, they, every wheel they do, they do the flange plate because it's more accurate too. Yeah. So. Yeah, because if I don't have to touch the face of the wheel, I'm always down for that. Yeah. And that's what these two machines are designed for. So. Sweet. What's up? First thing I put on was the walkaway light. That's just the indicator to let you know when the walkaway feature is working, which we'll get into later when we actually start doing a tire. Um, I loosened this panel up. I got to rotate it out of the way so I can get the bottom cover on. Um, help make some access to a few things. I also pulled off the back cover so I can get to the main circuit board in the back. Um, and there's a cover here that I pulled off. There's a motherboard directly behind this plate right here where kind of all the program runs. It is basically a computer at, at, at its core. Um, our monitor is going to hang here. We're going to have this shelf, which is here. It's going to hang here and have all our manual controls. Um, it's going to have the joysticks for operating whatever is going on. It's also going to have the inflation hose for airing up the tire. Um, down here at the bottom, we're going to install both the pedals. We're going to have a uh, a tilt pedal or a tilt slash go pedal we're also kind of a spindle pedal um one pedal is just what it means a tilt pedal it tilts the, the spindle down it'll stand it back up the other pedal actually spins the rotation um when we're all done we're gonna have four joysticks here one for each one of the arms um so we have an upper and lower roller arm bead press arm and obviously a tool head arm um once we get to that point you'll see that really the only joystick we use on any consistency is going to be the the one for the upper roller because that's how we do our input to tell it where the wheel is where the tire is what we're dealing with um so an hour maybe two hours worth of assembly we should be up and running and get this thing going be able to start mounting some tires so it looks to me like this one's easier to put together it is um yeah, for the most part there's a lot less parts to assemble yeah um, so it is somewhat easier it's just some things a little tricky on it I was just adjusting the height that was a little too high. So do you think this, am I gonna have enough working room here? Um, I'm pretty sure the thing, biggest thing is once they start moving the arms is double checking that they don't come back too far, but I don't yeah. think they will. They don't, um, is, they don't ex usually extend past the motor right here, so we should be in good shape. 
Um, this is basically this first startup procedure. Um, the only thing we really have to calibrate on these things when we first fire them up is the joysticks and the pedals, which mm -hmm. is a pretty simple procedure. I already did one to make sure it was going to work. I did the upper roller. So next three steps are pretty simple. You just follow instructions. And it's like I said, this is just startup stuff for the initial startup. Once I do I this. I never have to do it again. Yeah, unless some kind of part failure, which is pretty rare. So. Yeah. All right. button up a couple things real quick and I'll be ready to start mounting a tire and we'll see how everything works. So those are your manual overrides there? Right. And then, but normally if it's calibrated properly, you would just push the pedal. Yeah, you're pretty much using the pedal for everything. Doesn't really require a whole lot of input past the pedal. That's what we need. That's Mormon spec. Touchless. Your spares, yeah. you get a spare roller, two spare mount heads. You also get the back side of the mount head, which is the metal right here. In case you mm -hmm. damage it. Yeah, these mount heads just go on two Allen bolts right there. Yeah. You'll find that this tire paste, I don't know if you've used tire paste in the past from different companies, but um, a lot of companies' tire paste will stain a wheel if you don't wash it off quick. Mm -hmm. This stuff won't. Mm -hmm. The thing you do it when you're not using it, keep it covered. It'll, it'll dry, dry out. It'll dry out, yeah. Because what happens when you put this on a, on a wheel and you're doing it, it'll, it'll lubricate it really well in about five or ten minutes, it turns like a powder and just kind of disappears. Mm -hmm. so. But it works really well. And I carry this at all times, so I always have it with me. Cool. So, well, let's change the tire. The biggest thing has got the locating pin. You're always going to want to find that locating pin. So is that where those little thingies I have can go on this thing? Yeah, you can have the things on top. Got it. Okay. For my wheel, I'm not worried about scratching it, so sure. it's just demo wheel. Yeah. Um, this is kind of the important part on this, as far as clamping this thing down. This goes in. Yeah. Thumb pushing on top, it drops like that. You want to get that as close to the wheel as you can wherever you set that down. This is going to lock in place a little tighter than that because mm -hmm. I just got it sitting there. Um, but if you have it way up here and try to lock it, it's not going to have a throw. It's got a real short throw on it, but it's strong. Got so it. we're already up. It's going to give me an option of what we're doing. Notice I pushed the button and I went to the next step. Um, the go pedals are always your input for pretty much everything. Yeah. So now it's saying, hey, do you want? is this what you want to do? And you notice it's highlighted a little green button there saying, hey, this is what you want to do? And I'm like, yep, that's what I want to do. So, like, so it's locked. Okay. Now it's going to ask me for my location. It's going to get the lower beat out of the way. This is where you, your input really is on this machine as far as what you have to do or not do. I'm going to turn this just to see some rotation. What you're going to want to do is bring your ro lower roller down. Further out than that. You're going to want it somewhat level. You know, maybe just a little bit on the high side. And the only reason why I say a little bit on the high side is because it helps the lower roller a little bit. So that's a pretty good location right there. Mm -hmm. Of course, saying what do you want to do? Well, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to set my location. Now it's asking, do you want to demount? I sure do. Let me get the air out of it first. So probably a good idea. Once we got our air out, we're going to go ahead and do our demount. Now, if you're doing really low sidewalls, you want to put some of this on D demount too. This helps it. You also want to have that lubricated. And that lubricated. You can 
notice my little man there's turning green, starting to turn green. Yeah. If he turns fully green, the next tire, I don't have to stand there and hold it the whole time. That's only if you complete the demount process without having to lift off the pedal or interrupt the process. Mm. So like right now, it's up green. I mean, the next time I go to do one, I can actually just, once I, I'll, I'll put it back on, we'll do it again, that way you see it. So now it's saying, okay, we got the tire off, what do you want to do? So we know we're gonna to continue to mount both beads thing. Now the whole time, it's always watching where the valve stem's at, so. But then again, when you're doing these, especially if you're doing you know, high-end wheels and stuff, you want to pay attention a little bit. I didn't pay real close attention, unfortunately, at times with my wheel, but mm -hmm. you'd want to watch, make sure it didn't actually hit a valve stem, because if, if something does malfunction, that's when it happens, you know. So we're gonna mount both beads, so we're gonna tell it that's what we want to do. Same angle the tire over, release it. We're gonna do it again. Now it's gonna ask me if I want the pushers. So this is where it comes into play of the old school tire machine and stuff. You used to always put your hand there and walk around the machine mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Well, we don't have to. I don't like getting my fingers in there. So I bring this around. Notice it shows on the screen coming around too. Oh, cool. So I'm gonna step on that. And like he said in the video, keep clear of these things. When they jump the first time, they jump pretty hard. How do you keep that thing from hitting your wheel? I just gotta recalibrate it. That's what I like doing on my test wheel one time to you know, see what happens. So at this point, if we had air, we air up my tire. <laughs> so these things inflate pretty easy. Best practice to keep is to remember not to uh, unclamp it until you get the beads pop. That way you're not bouncing around on you and stuff like that. So at this point, if I was done, I would unclamp it and I would tilt it down so I ain't got to pick it up, you know, same thing. So I'm just going to go right back up with it. Make sure I'm still on my locator. Now I'm going to show you what the walkaway does. That's kind of cool. So this time it thinks I'm on to a new tire. So this would be theoretically you got four of the same. Four of the same pattern. tire. Yeah. Okay. You can only do it if you're four of the same. Same as last. Now guy. same you want to set same as last, a little bit different. You don't have to bring this down anymore. Okay. All you gotta do is get the valve stem in line. So all you gotta do is back up where, where it's at. Then I can say, yep, it's same as last. It's gonna know where the rim's at. I don't have to reteach everything. Okay. It's gonna ask you that. Yep. And now I can start balancing my other tire I just did. So that thing's not actually touching the wheel there, this piece back there. Just barely. But it's not enough to hurt it. And that plastic, it's really forgiving. Is that thing gonna roll off or is it gonna stay right there? I was ready to catch it. There is actually a mode I can have, I can set it where the tool hook will actually hold, stay down there until you come back to the machine. I just haven't turned that on yet. So you notice it was flashing green too, saying, hey, I'm working. Ah. So, hmm. so now it's done two in a row. The next, if I did it again, it would just right, run right through the process all over again. Got it. So yeah, I probably should set that mount head where it'll catch it for you, because there are some instances where the tire would pop off of that. Mm. But if you leave the mount yeah, head the down Yeah, the tire's really a uh, bigger wheel. Yeah. yeah. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah. I have to read, to read the instructions like 10 times. <laughs> I just want to see if these catch again before I recalibrate it. I probably will. Yep.
Cool so pose. if it was coming down like that, you could just let off the... You let off. As soon as you let off, it stops what it's doing, no matter yeah. what you're doing. So now that I know it did it once, I can come off and do that and manually pull it out. Because mm -hmm. this goes those, and then up and down is that part. So that's one of the things, you know, especially if you're doing your high-end wheels, you want to be watching it. The walk away is a cool feature, but yeah, on something expensive like those, I'm going to watch it the whole time. I'm not going to walk away from it, but that's just my personal preference. Yeah. Of course, once I fix that calibration issue, it won't be a problem anyway. So, so those arm, or those, what is that called? The roller arm or the push down thingy? Mm -hmm. So those will operate based on where you set your roller, the TPM, see? So you're just calibrating that distance. So if I have a 20-inch wheel or a 24-inch wheel or a 16-inch wheel, it won't matter. It'll base it off of where you set the initial roller, the little 45 roller. Yep. Would you like to use your machine? All right, I, I like watching. I cleared it. Out. I just realized. I'm like, I don't really want to do this. I should just hire somebody to do this for me. Uh, I, I, actually, you bought the perfect machine for watching. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only going to ask you a few questions, yeah. and then it's I did clear it so it doesn't know about the tire anymore. The beads on. Yeah, let me finish doing that. So, what about all my fancy tools I got over there too? All my fancy. Oh, yeah. We can get in all that. Let's we'll right. get you through mountain oh, yeah. water so, real quick, so, easy. Okay. All right, so go here. Just get the thing in the hole. Slap your. Wheel on there. <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna go which way? Go? Uh, uh, yeah, go to the right. Always go, go. Yeah, it's tilt up. Or you say I gotta make sure I'm lining up something. Usually you can spin it and one of the, it'll pop up through one of the holes. Yeah. It's like rotating on one. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm looking for. Okay. There it is. See it pop up right there? Shit, there it goes. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's got a little spring tension on it, so it'll wobble it. around a little bit. So then I'm gonna put this on. Yep. That seems push. to make logical sense. I'm gonna push the thumb on the top. There you go. This is the bearings. Three. There you go. I'm on. You're okay. on. My screen should be giving you a hint to clamp it. Do you want to clamp? So yes. Step on the go pedal. Now what? Now you gotta set your location. So you put, turn yes, your valve. Bring this here. here. Yep. So red one. I don't know. How do I spin it? Does that's a rotation pedal. Okay. One more over. Oh, there you go. One. Right there. I got it. Okay. Now we gotta Thank back you. up a little bit though. We just set the location. I know it didn't. Never mind. Go ahead. It knew we hadn't turned it yet. So you get that valve stem like right in front of that wheel. There you go. I'm gonna bring it that way. Yep. A little more? Yep. You know, about an eighth of an inch there. Come back a little bit. Too much. It's already out. That's where we want, right there. Pretty close. If you want to do, put your finger on it a little bit high. You want to come back just a little bit. You almost want it level. There you go. Okay. That's good. Okay. Yep. Now you say set this location. All you do is step on the go pedal one time. Okay. And now it's set. Okay. Now it's asking what you want to do. You want to demount it? Uh, uh, yeah. So you're going to step on a go pedal and hold it. So that would be, what are my options? I mean, mounting or well, what's you want to demount first. Right. Well, what does match mount mean? It's just the things, the next steps of it. Yeah. If you need to do something different or change up yeah. what you wanted to do. So I'm so you can skip ahead if for so some reason you already had the, the rim, the tire was dismount or, you know, the beads were broken or something. You can skip ahead by scrolling on that. Gotcha. Okay. So at this point, if you want to dismount that, hold the go pedal down. Now, as you're going through this process, if there's anything you don't like the machine's doing, you let off the pedal, it automatically stops. Well, instead of this, you can grab your loop brush there. Yeah. Put a paste on it. Pull the paste on your mount head real quick. There you go. Yeah. I saw you went underneath it yeah, before. Yeah, well, it's This tire's still lubed up, it probably doesn't yeah. matter anymore. But I would, yeah, but like right there. Yep. And you're just, am I lubing the wheel or the tire? Most of the tire. Okay. This so thing I would get so much that. lube on it now, it's just. Just gonna do that.
Now when you do your first tire and anything you're doing, before you think about doing a walk away, you want to make sure this is actually getting the drop center where it's supposed to be. This tire is going every time, so you're doing good. Certain tires will hang up down here, and when you try to pull up, it'll stall out the motor. And then I could yeah. keep going. Yep, keep going until everything clears out of your way. Now it says you can stop. Okay. Okay. So now you would grab your your tire off of there, and I see you yep. got your new tire. Yep. Put okay. You tire lube, on. You lube your new tire. Yep. So you want to stand up. So I lube both sides. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. You okay. don't need to do this right yeah, now. Yeah. It's all lubed up. And so, then and then I would go and put it back on, right? Like, yep. At an angle. Set it like that. Yep. And you're gonna step on the. You're going on angled over here. That way, that mount okay. can get in. So got what it. you're gonna do is step on the pedal once. So it's continue yep. about both. Pieces. Step on it once real quick. All right. Now it says angle the tire. What you're doing? Now just yep. step down and hold it. And this is one of the places you may have to input a little bit just to get it to give traction to go around. There you go. Now it's saying, hey, what do you want? Do you want to use these? So you grab those, grab the first one, pull it on around, pull it off the pedal. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it'll beep at you the whole time. Okay. There you go. Pull and all the way over. All the way over. All the way to yep. here. Got and it. keep hands clear of these at all times once Got you start going again. So now I release. Step on your go pedal. You got your inflation. You can let off. As soon as you see that, you can let off the pedal. Okay. So you can take your inflation hose and stick it on there. Now I notice you're you're just inflating without the core in there. Would I normally inflate it with the uh, with this thing in there? It, it feels faster without it. And then you just got you got to be quick and put your stem in with the air blowing back at you. Okay. That's what most guys do. Because we're gonna calibrate. We're we're gonna do our actual tire pressure over here. More than likely, yeah. Okay. So. Is this getting seated? Yes. Yeah. You, it's got a gauge on it, but it's also going to prompt you to do it over here before you do a road force. So I'm going to put this on now on. Push the start button. Uh, well, I don't have to do anything. I'm not pedal, I'm pedal or anything. It knows when. Yeah, it's going to take a 32 PSI if that's what you want. But you can go ahead and push stop on it. So you're going to pick whatever cone you want. Important to remember not to cone from the front. That's not the proper way to do it. You always cone from the back. That's the machine surface where you can get a hold of it. So you're just going to pick your cone that fits the best in size. That's the best yeah. one right there. You're going to roll it up here in your wheel lift. Simple up with that. It is an airbag, so you got some push cushion it, yeah. there. You don't have to get it exactly on the first try. You got your small cone. We also have a bigger one over there. Once you get it started, you can do that. It'll pull it on for you. You just want to make sure it's on good and snug. You don't need to hit it, beat on it, nothing like that. Just make sure it's in place. And on this one, we simply lower the hood. I'm just going to start taking measurements and it's going to ask for that again. So I'm going to say yes, I already set it. But this has a calibrated inflation device as well on that thing. But normally you're going to inflate it over there. You're going to fill it up there and bring it over here. I can make that prompt go away where it doesn't do that anymore, but it's just nice to have it on there in case you pulled something off the car that you hadn't checked the air in yet. It's yeah. always there. I'm going to be doing that a lot, just randomly mount, you know, mount rebalancing right. my tires. Right. As they wear, just mm -hmm. pop them off the car, come over here, throw it on there. I don't need to mess right. with that thing. Yeah. So I'll be using this way more. Okay. Okay, so then. So what does it exactly mean by the road force detected? What is the road force? Mean that, that means that tire's trash. It's got high and low spots in it we can't get past. Um, okay. It's just gonna not be a good ride no matter what you do. Um, passenger cars are what, 15 pounds, Glenn? 18. 18, so anything in under 18 on a passenger car is considered good. Trucks jump up like 25 or 30 or whatever it is. Yeah, it's 18 for cars, 26 for SUVs yeah. and, and the lighter vehicles, and then <clears throat> 39 for like trucks like uh, his truck, his, yeah. you know, his uh, work truck and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
road force is totally different than imbalance. So it's telling you the amount of weight that's on, you know, that's on screen. That will take care of the balance. And the balance is, uh, as this thing's going down the road, are there any forces causing it to do this? The road force is telling us that it could be that the tire's just not as round, mm -hmm. but most of the time it's the sidewall. The sidewall's stiff, stiffer in one spot compared to the rest. Uh -huh. And what that ends up being, it's like uh, every revolution, it's thumping on this and it's so and it's causing a harmonic uh, mm -hmm. a road force issues when you're driving down the road that's a car you, you don't actually feel the steering wheel shaking or anything like that but you feel like a hum in the seat of your pants or or in this and you can feel in the steering wheel or you look it up the mirror and you'll see that the mirrors like humming it it's because the tires are generating noise so if you press force match mm -hmm. it's going to push on the tire is that what it's no, going to do it's going to tell you where to turn that tire on the yeah. wheel to match it up the best it's going to find the high and the low spot of the wheel on the tire and put them opposite each other oh, so it'll like it'll align with like the valve stem because there's right. more weight there well it's like that. in the case of this it's going to it's so, going to have a skill so then you're going to make a chalk mark and you're going to go back over there and you're going to turn it right yep got it okay so that's just like lining up so it's telling me make a mark here yep yep where the tire is. yep and then you mark the rim in its spot oh okay and which you can servo which it, you can servo to it says servo you hit that no, no it brings you the top which ironically is right by the valve stem you know that's yeah, that's the just parts so that's, that's the low spot of the rim that's yep. what that's telling us is right there that's the low spot of the rim and the other spot so, was the high spot of so is, the tire. is that worth it value even on a good wheel and tire to do that every time well isn't it mostly true um like with most tires they'll put a mark on the tire where they've tested it like a little paint mark That's yeah most brand new tires have a mark where you're supposed to put the valve stem the factory valve stem and it's supposed to be correct to help but you. it's either yellow or pink or blue depending on the manufacturer but yeah there is a mark on most of the tires where you, most guys tend to line up the valve stem there and it usually works out better yeah to try and get the best match before having to go back and forth right back and forth now, if we were going to turn this thing, this is the one time you would use manual controls on that rather than using the whole procedure, because then you can just use the rollers to manually break down the bead and grab your tire and spin it to make your marks line up. Right, because you we grab your we tire with the rollers. Through, we don't need to go the whole, through the whole right. procedure. Right, but you do well, manual controls. Also, you were talking before, what was that match mounting? Got it. That's what this so is. So I click on that mode. You could, you could tell that machine where the two marks are, and it'll do it for you, yeah. but it's just going to be faster for you just to uh, you know bring the rollers up uh, break the bead now or just use the first part of it let it break the bead yeah. and then you can just squeeze the rollers in a little bit more and lift up on that pedal and the rim will turn and Same. you can line those yeah. marks you don't hold the tire stationary and just yeah. rotate the yeah. rim yeah. yeah yeah just let the upper let roller, the rollers upper hold roller go down lower roller go up it'll pinch you you saw it happening when you were doing it because you're adding lube to it and it had enough tension and the rim had enough lube on it to where that was spinning so it'll do that same thing uh, but if you're asking if it's worth it you've got 40 more pounds of road force and you can get it down to 22 yeah you, that would probably be something that most people would be able to live with 41 pounds of road force on a vehicle if you're yeah. putting it on one of these you, you're not going to be happy at all but if you can get it down that low you might be able yeah that's to, actually a mercedes you know, wheel so that wouldn't be happy <laughs> yeah, you could, you could make it to where, you know, you're getting it into an acceptable range. Got it. So what that's saying is if we went and rotated it, we'd get it down to 22, which is still in the red, still not good. Still not great, but it's, that's the prediction. Got it. And then you'd put it back on, and then we're going to add weights, and that's the best we're going to be able to get. Right. Yes. And that's typically an issue. So, ex so explain that to me again. So road force, the road force part. So there's two parts of balancing on this, or there's only one? Well, there's only one part of balancing. Yeah. This, this is just this, is, this machine is a vibration control system, so it's looking at two separate things. Yeah. It is looking at imbalance, which is what any balancer will do. Yeah. But it is also, by using that roller in the back, finding out how round this assembly is uh -huh. going down the road. And it's going to find any stiff spots in the sidewall or let's say you decide to not use our lube and you do what a lot of tire shops do and they use like liquid put a little soap in there and use that it's a lousy lubricant and on a, most of these i mean you heard yours you you we knew or when we just did this we knew it was seated because it had yeah. that pop okay if you don't hear two pops you did it wrong mm. if you hear a third pop <laughs> It, you're definitely doing it wrong. You definitely did it wrong because it now it's not going to be seated as well as it should be seated. 
And if it's not, if it's not seated in in the you know in that bead seat. Or if there's a discrepancy, I mean, it happens every once in a while. There's just a, a tire that it, you just can't make good, especially if you've got four perfect rims. Four so, rims with no run out. So if the road, so the road force step, the only way to correct that is the match mount to change the yes. way it's mounted. So the road force is just telling me, hey, um, it's it's out of whack. You want to take it back off and go 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 fix it. You want that. to match your weights right. to where the, the you can't has the less weight and that has the most. It's like basically like almost like a harmonic correction instead yeah. of an imbalance. Well, that's doing what you're doing, right? You're you're positioning it to where you're going to make this assembly as round as possible. Yeah. So the road force part is not actually doing anything. It's just telling me, hey, you How might to do it. you might want to change the way your tires mounted. Right. Then after that, then it's going to tell me where to put my wheel weights, which yes. is the actual you know. Yep. No Which, like right now, say we did it, we go back to balance. It's going to tell you, you can put these weights on, but it, if you're fixing carried over there, don't put any weights on it because you're fixing a carried over there. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no sense. You just take it off, bring it back over, start over again. All right, that's a wrap for setup. Uh, I think would probably be best served getting you, uh, you know, you guys chuckling at me when I try to do the Tesla wheels. It'll be the first ones I do with a uh, really, really uh, tight dust, uh, a tiny sidewall. Um, but uh, I'm excited. It's like it's a bit overwhelming. Uh, like, where do you even start? And I think the way to do it is just start working through the menus, watch some of the tutorial videos. Um, I actually would prefer. I prefer. I get. I learn best when I'm on my own and no one's bothering me, and not from a teacher. It's usually from just kind of fumbling through it and figuring some things out. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna chase that. Uh, you know, this week, this weekend changing the Tesla tires and I've got the Raptor stuff to do and I've got the wheels on the, e, the E36 to rebalance and I'll probably just rebalance everything I got and then we got to figure out uh, what to do with the center locks so I'll have to figure that out at some point as well um, but that's a wrap on uh, setting up our our uh, Revolution and RE13 um, Hunter Road Force balancer so be mounting and balancing crazy. It's uh, certainly not necessary. I get that, um, but you know that's that's the spice of life is to chase uh, chase the uh, convenience of having awesomeness all around you. So anyway, stay tuned for more crazy. Stay tuned for more updates on this stuff. Uh, once we get it figured out, then I'll be doing more videos on how how I you know how I use it and all that, which hopefully will be helpful for those that in the future plan on getting these in their own garage. So. Thanks for watching. See you soon.